praise him. He's an expert in the field of outdoor intervention, outdoor wilderness experiential education. He's a, he's a dual citizen in Britain and also in the United States. He's extensive outdoor intervention in you know, Vision Quest in this county. He became a juvenile probation officer in 2007. Dominic continues to create opportunities for growth and behavior change on behalf of the youth and families that he works with on a weekly basis. He's also a substance abuse uh, per specialist, prevention, wilderness first responder, professional climbing instructor, ropes course manager, and inspector. He manages his caseload at the lake. He's our juvenile probation liaison at the elementary school and hotel high school at the time. He managed, um, he does more than is expected in respect to ensuring that kids and families get the necessary supervision, accountability, and success to complete the competition. He is indispensable when it comes to organizing the logistics and operations of our outdoor intervention program, which is a 30 year history of Douglas County. Trips in the region, attention to detail towards safety protocols, essential to the safe sterling safety record he has accomplished over 16 years. He has worked. I don't know of a, a, a real serious, I, I can think of two incidents that would be categorized as absolutely terribly serious. And I hope all of the many outings and hours that he spent with kids in our community in different environments in the winter and the summer. He does everything from kayak, camping, going to backcountry, trail building in Nevada State Parks, and you know, the top of the trail as far as Dominic possesses an invaluable skill in his ability to work with juveniles in the field, providing instruction, accountability, building confidence, and success. I did. On behalf of Judge Thomas Gregory, Dominic, thanks for all you do for Douglas County Juvenile Probation Department and the youth families. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Judge.
their ability to quickly assess the situation, to respond immediately, to do it under pressure, and to do it right. Very important. Also with that, I'm going to take a little side note, and our profession is emerging in, from under the law enforcement environment. I also want to talk about the tools that they use to make sure everybody in this room gets home safely and knows what they're responding to. And that has to do with scripted protocols. Douglas County has given us these tools, and with that, we are able to provide consistent customer service and instructions for situations such as CPR, childbirth, choking, uncontrolled bleeding, person on fire, active shooter situations, and we do that day or night, 24-7, 365. Weekends, holidays, we are here, and you're gonna get the same consistency every day. I also wanna point out there are states that are just now mandating the uh, 911 Center to revive CPR instruction. I still find that mind-blowing, but Douglas County has been doing this for decades. It was also in 2008 that we challenged ourselves that we could do better as a 911 center. We could provide more to the citizens of Douglas County. And that's when we started our public assurance program. Big deal, you say, right? What's, what do we care? Through that review process, we're able to review the calls that come in, we're able to find room for improvement, we're able to provide feedback to our dispatchers, for responders, and that ensures training. That's the best thing that you can do. You can train. Train, train, train. All of this prepares, prepares our dispatchers for that call. That call we don't ever want to make, that we don't want to hear, but it happens. The husband, wife, baby, friend, colleague, unconscious, not breathing. What do you do? So now I would like to present some very special 911 heroes who relied on their skills, their inherent training,
He had a minor seizure, but that really was, was not the main issue. He provided life-saving instructions. The really awesome part of this story was he not only survived, he came into the dispatch center to personally thank Ed. It was an emotional, heart-wrenching, beautiful experience to watch. He thanked Ed, the entire system. It was just amazing to know that the guy that you were helping on the other end of the phone was actually dead. And then there he was in our center. It was just stunning. So please, big round of applause. For
gave us the information uh, that I'm going to read to you about Rich. Uh, but before that, when I was a deputy, Rich would ride with us. Uh, and I got to know him. Um, he's very knowledgeable on some great deer hunting spots. So, sidebar uh, after this, it's a good guy to know. Uh, but I was always impressed with how much Rich cared and wanted to uh, serve the sheriff's office uh, as a volunteer and how involved he was in the community. And I'm sure uh, many of you know him. And so Leo wrote uh, this about Rich. I've known Rich for nearly 28 years. During that time, I have witnessed a man with impeccable character and unwavering commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ and to the people he served. He is my best friend in the ministry. We have shared buildings and worked together on numerous projects. There are not many people I would trust my life to, but he is one of them. Even in times of difficulty, he takes time to encourage others and has compassion on those who are in need, regardless of what the need is. He is one of the finest men I have ever known. There is not much more to be said except that his integrity goes before him, and he is an example of what can happen to a person who is, who is trusting Jesus Christ for his salvation. Rich, I'm proud to know you, and thank you for your service to the Sheriff's Office. Uh, we really appreciate it.
Being a member of Citizens Patrol means to be willing to give up quality time with family and friends. It means you are willing to support the Douglas County Sheriff's Office deputies by providing necessary services to the citizens of Douglas County. It also means to be available to assist in emergency situations that free up deputies to provide more needed services. With 18 years of volunteer service, Steve Bolger is a real veteran citizen patrol officer. He's one of those people that is always willing to jump in and help whenever needed. Steve has performed vacation checks, pin checks, handicapped space and red curve enforcement, as well as red tag and towing of abandoned vehicles. Steve always volunteers for special assignments. He's provided traffic control, food duties, emergency flood hotline duties, assisted in physical agility testing for new recruits, and many other services during his extensive time on the board. As a citizen patrol officer, Steve has been a respected representative of the Douglas County Sheriff's Office. Not only does he provide his time for free, but he offers up his own personal property to assist in raising money for the children of the DCSO Scholarship Fund. Steve is always willing to take on a new assignment. You can always count on him chipping in to make sure what he needs to get done gets completed. Steve has just celebrated his first year on Citizen Control Advisory Board. Steve is a quiet, friendly, intelligent, honorable person. He offers great insight into resolving issues and getting things done. The amount of time and effort Steve has provided to the Douglas County is endless. He truly is an asset to Citizen Control, the Sheriff's Office, and the community. It is a great honor and respect that I congratulate Steve as Citizen Control Officer of the Year. Will Explorer Sergeant Fallon Montanucci come up? As you see tonight, uh, the Sheriff's Office Explorer Post um, assisted us with the posting of the car, serving our food, busting the tables, uh, and they do a phenomenal job. Uh, they are young men and women who have an interest in law enforcement, and through our Explorer program, they're able to learn what uh, sworn officers do. Uh, they just competed in a, a competition down in Tulare County in California and brought back so many trophies that we have to uh, move old ones out. <laughs> Our building is too small. <laughs> and so uh, they're very active, they're very dedicated, and I think Fallon is an excellent uh, example of the youth, which is the future of our community, uh, and just what a nice young man and women Fallon became a Douglas County Sheriff's Explorer in July of 2014. Fallon quickly evolved from a shy young lady to a confident, positive, and enthusiastic leader. Fallon has always exhibited a superior personal drive and has become a strong leader within our post and currently holds the rank of sergeant. Fallon strives to achieve many of DCSO's missions and values, serves as an inspiration to her fellow explorers. Most recently, she was part of the team of explorers who placed first overall in Tulare County Explorer Competition. This was the first time in DCSO history the explorers had been awarded first place overall. During our weekly supervision of Fallon, we have noticed that she had a competitive spirit and performed very well in her stressful situation. Fallon successfully interacts with community members, the general public, her peers, and members of the Sheriff's Office. Fallon is always patient, polite, and of others. Fallon has completed over 800 hours of community service as an explorer, additionally completing hundreds of hours at her church as a volunteer. Fallon helped train and supervise over 16 explorers and she is a key motivator and mentor to all of them. Fallon unselfishly trains her fellow explorers and takes great pride in the job she performs. As an example, Sergeant Montanucci assisted out of state with an in line of duty police officer's funeral in the state of Oregon. Hundreds of Oregon police officers and agencies who were present had high praise for all of the explorers in attendance from DCSO, which included the squad which was led by Sergeant Montanucci. In August of 2014, Fallon attended the Orange County Sheriff's Explorer Enforcement Academy with our coach. She excelled during the grueling four days of stress, exhaustion, and mental exertion. Fallon is a self-motivated, dedicated, and hardworking young woman. Fallon is a senior and is graduating from Douglas High School this year. She has a superior military bearing, professional demeanor, and outstanding uniform appearance, and is a member of our Explorer Honor Guard. Fallon has
has a very close relationship with her family, excuse me, with her family members. <laughs> She genuinely wants to always do her very best to make them proud. Fallon always represents the Sheriff's Office with great pride and integrity. Please join me in congratulating for Fallon on the new chief of the 2018.
what it takes to be a reserve deputy of the year, it takes someone who is willing to give up quality time with family and friends and put the Douglas County Sheriff's Office above himself, oftentimes without notice. It takes someone who will do this job for no pay, and it takes someone who is willing to risk his or her life to serve his community. Most importantly, it takes someone who loves law enforcement and someone who works 10 plus hours as a regular job and puts an additional 10 hours riding on patrol with another deputy. Tonight, it's my distinct honor to recognize Deputy Joe Benigno as the 2008 Reserve Officer of the Year. Over the past three years, I've known Joe to be someone who is always on time to keep your time to assignments. Joe embodies the mission and values and statements of, of the Sheriff's Office. Joe is committed to enhancing the quality of life for everyone. On more than one occasion, I've seen Joe either land his own personal equipment or meet someone on a Saturday to do gravel or into a nuisance tree. Joe has done this more than for more than one organization in Douglas County. Joe has donated money, time, and labor for his expertise to get the job done. And this compassion, compassionate man has asked nothing in return. Most recently, Joe was called upon to assist with the teardown of the Halloween safety street. Again, Joe responded with, I'll be there as soon as I can, and what tools will I need? This is the type of person Joe is outside of the sheriff's office. Joe has been a reserve deputy since 2004 and owns and operates his own business, Joe Benigno's Tree Service. This is important to note because Joe exceeds the minimum standards of being a reserve deputy and enjoys serving the citizens of Douglas County. Throughout Joe's tenure as a reserve, he has responded to homicides, plane crash, several wildland fires, fatal traffic accidents, and the Johnson Lane murder, which included the grim recovery of body burned, buried in the desert. Joe performed cardiopulmonary resuscitation on a heart attack victim who unfortunately was not able to be revived. Joe has worked many hours on the Topaz boat crew, working long shifts in the blistering sun, assisting residents and visitors on the water or on the shore. When called upon to respond to an emergency, Joe not only promptly answers the call for service, but he will offer his expertise and equipment for the use during these uncertain events. Joe has earned the respect of his fellow deputies, reserve, and command staff. Joe has worked a variety of assignments, which have included the Valley Jail, Boat Patrol. His favorite assignment is Patrol. Joe typically is eager to work the radio, assist in the report, issuing a citation, or locating and collecting evidence. In the past, around the holidays, Joe has been partnered up with another reserve. They have been seen driving local parking lot of business complexes, providing high visibility in the hopes of deterring crime. Joe is a humble, hardworking, and dedicated member of our Sheriff's Office. Counted on eagerly to take on and successfully complete the task we ask him. Speaking on behalf of the Sheriff's Office, we are extremely fortunate to have Joe work in our community and for the Sheriff's Office. Joe has been and has been and continues to be a role model in our Reserve Deputy Sheriff's Program and the Reserve Program thanks him for his service and dedication. Sheriff's Office can maintain access to the National Crime Information Center 
as well as in the Nevada Criminal Justice Information Center. Crystal is willing to take on any new task asked of her. Recently, she has been cross-trained to cover payroll for administration. Crystal demonstrates honest and ethical conduct through her actions at all times. Crystal is well liked among her peers and always provides exceptional customer service. And she's just, just a pleasure to work with. And thank you so much.
February, we got a call of three people shoplifting from Walmart. We get a lot of shoplifters at Walmart. One of our uh, hottest areas that we go to to call for service is Walmart, both north and south. So these three people, two males and a female, stole hundreds of dollars of cameras and electronic equipment and took off in a car. Our deputy uh, stopped this car, found this car up by the Silver City RV Park at 395. Upon stopping the car, one of the suspects laid down in the back seat and wouldn't cooperate. So he had to get his case around and get this guy out. The guy gets out of the car and starts fighting with uh, Officer Haley. So Mr. Marco Huerta saw, was driving by and saw what was occurring and stopped to assist. And while assisting, he got pushed by the, by the suspect into a barbed wire fence and, and received a cut from his hand. The suspect then broke away from the deputy. The deputy ended up tasering him. It was ineffective, and the fight was on. So Mr. Keith Smith stopped to help. And then while this was occurring, the other two people in the car started acting up. And Mr. Uh, Brady Bell and Moraski, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly, <laughs> all stopped to assist the deputy and they were uh, all three safely taken into custody. So when physical altercations like these occur, most people like to stop and put it, you know, put it on YouTube and film it. These five gentlemen have the courage and the tenacity to, to risk basically their own lives. They don't have police training, they don't have vests, they don't have guns, they don't have radios to stop and help one of our officers who was in trouble and needed help. Uh, work, work overtime because uh, our guys are short and he is held. 
So I'm very proud of his accomplishments. He is a, uh, one of the hardest working deputies that we have. And in addition to those other duties, uh, he is a, a defensive tactics instructor. So Deputy Rodriguez is very, very skilled in the martial arts. Uh, he trains our officers and also molds them in how to be defensive tactics, uh, not experts, but proficient in defensive tactics, so they're safe, they stay safe on the street. And he's also a Army Reservist, and he is, he's both rank as Sergeant Major. He has done, he's done 27 years, both active and reserve. Rodriguez has three different deployments overseas. In 2003, he was deployed to Iraq for 19 months. In 2009, he was deployed to Iraq for one year. And most recently, he was deployed to Afghanistan in 2013 for a year. Like Deputy Kimbrell, I also get a lot of compliments from his peers, his supervisors, the public. Uh, he's just got a great attitude. He's very tenacious. I can assure you that you can sleep when he works graveyard. You can sleep safe, safely in your beds at night, knowing he's out patrolling your neighborhoods and keeping these knuckleheads at bay. <laughs> so, for those reasons, I can tell you that the citizens, you and, and us as the sheriff's department, are very lucky to have a deputy like Rodriguez here. And for those reasons, he's named Patrol Deputy of the Year. Deborah has been an exemplary member of the Douglas County Sheriff's Office 
and I'm proud to present her with this plaque for the Investigation uh, Division Employee of the Year. Yeah. 
tell you the work that we have done, and it deserves a special recognition for everything that he's done. And I'd ask you to join me in a round of applause for Bill.
Last week, Ron was at his last post meeting. He's the chairman of the police officers and standards training. And so he's been doing that under three governors, even the commissioner. So his last meeting, which is right before the law enforcement memorial, the governor's office gave him a proclamation. And I'm going to read that proclamation. And it has to do, you'll see why May 16th comes up when it does. A proclamation by the governor, where a sheriff Ron Perini is a second generation Nevada who has honorably and faithfully served the citizens and visitors of the Silver State for more than 45 years, and whereas he began his law enforcement career in Carson City in 1973 and was employed by the Nevada State Prison from 1975 to 1976 when he started with the Douglas County Sheriff's Office, where he rose through the ranks to be appointed to replace Sheriff Jerry Maple in 1997, and was elected to that position in 1998, and has served as the Douglas County Sheriff since that time. And, whereas, through his years of dedicated law enforcement, he has served the people of Nevada, and in 2002, he was appointed to the Nevada Commission on Peace Officer Standards and Training. And in July 2006, he was appointed chairman of the commission where he has served the law enforcement community, community for more than 12 years. And whereas, through his unwavering commitment to public safety and leadership, Sheriff Ron Perini has helped shape the training and standards of Nevada law enforcement officers today and into the future. And whereas Douglas County Sheriff Ron Perini's hard work, loyalty, commitment to the law enforcement community and the safety of all citizens and visitors to Nevada is to be recognized. And whereas the state of Nevada commends Sheriff Ron Perini on his outstanding tenure and dedication and joins his family, friends, and colleagues and extending sincere appreciation to him for his years of service with best wishes for a happy and fulfilling retirement. Now therefore, I, Brian Sandoval, Governor of the State of Nevada, do hereby proclaim May 16, 2018, a day in honor of Sheriff Ron Perry.